self-defense walking stick. This is just a 36 inch dowel rod. You can get at any hardware store. It cost less than 10 bucks. This one cost about $4 because it was on sale. It was half price. You get a little bit of sandpaper. You sand it very smooth and you put some mineral oil or other basic oil like that that you would use for wood on it and that makes it more flexible so that it's not likely to break. Now you have a walking stick that can assist you getting around. You can take it on a hike, take it on a stroll down the street, or you can use it to train with another walking stick. Maybe you have some kind of nice walking stick that you carry or even a shillelagh, something like that. You can train with this. It's the same length and then you'll know how to defend yourself with some very basic, simple moves. Good morning, Garen. It's good to see you this morning. The first thing that I'm gonna talk about is real basic, but then we're gonna add a little bit more advanced techniques in this training video today, this protect and defend, how to use a homemade self-defense walking stick. The first thing that I'm gonna have you do is put it in the back hand, because we're gonna use this in the more advanced technique. I want you to slide your hand down the back, turn your hip, turn your shoulder, and bring the side up and over. And I want you guys to hold on for just a second because I realized I left the fan on and that thing is loud. I just mopped the mats and when I do that, I've got to turn this big nasty fan on. There we go. Now you can, I can hear myself. I don't know if you can hear me any better. So from here, it's in the back hand. This is the threat. Let's say that's the side of his head. I'm gonna go upside the side of his head for self-defense in this simple move. So from here, turning, I'm coming very fast, simply holding it in a tight, firm grip. I'm turning my shoulder this way, I'm turning my hip, and my wrist is turning over so that this pinky side is up. So from here, I'm coming up and into the side of his head for self-defense. That's the first move. And again, today, good morning, Matthew, it's good to see you. Today, we're gonna go over a little bit more advanced techniques for the Japanese Hanbo, which is another name for the self-defense walking stick. In this case, it's a homemade self-defense walking stick. You can make yourself for less than five bucks. So it's in my back hand. This is my right hand. My left foot is between myself and the threat. I can have this hand up. I'm talking, I'm saying, hey, you're getting too close, back up. I slide my back hand down. The back side of the staff is simple as this. It's a very subtle move. He tries to close the gap. He's coming forward. Maybe he's got a knife or gun or some type of punch. He's trying to grab me, hit me with a skateboard. And I'm just gonna swing as hard and fast as I can. And I wanna target things that I can remove or destroy for self-defense, like his ability to be awake. If I can knock him unconscious, that's my first choice. I will always go that way first. Homie he said uh, he just lost something very important to him. Sorry to hear that. From here, I turn this up, coming aside the head, or you can go into the neck into the shoulder or that elbow joint, trying to break the joint. Maybe his hand is out, he's reaching or punching and you're gonna strike the rib. Or you can come into the hip or even down and into, into the knee, breaking that knee for self-defense. Now that's the basic version. I wanna show you a little bit more advanced version and then I wanna give you something to train, something to practice with that's gonna make you better at it. This is my right hand, it's in the right side. I'm going to step to the right and then bring my left foot over. So what I'm doing is, this is the center line, he's coming straight in, I'm gonna sidestep, putting myself at an angle now to his body as I strike. What that's gonna do for you is get you out of the way of his attack. You're moving off the center line, he goes by here, this stick comes flying into his head or his arm, whatever you decide to hit, whatever you've targeted for self-defense. So this basic move, Striking here, I advance it a little bit or progress it by stepping right, left, and strike. Now look at my feet. I'm gonna turn this down. This is very important, and I see this done incorrectly from time to time, never by you, but by other people. Stepping right, left. When I go to the right, my right foot always leads. That keeps me from doing this. Anytime you cross your feet and you get hit, you're going to the ground. You're gonna trip yourself and fall. Anytime you move to the right, when your right leg is back, step right, left. And so the opposite is true. When you go to the left, you're gonna step left, right. We're gonna come back to that when we go to the left. Because I am gonna show you 
something to do when you go to the left side that's a little bit more advanced in this protect and defend how to use a homemade self-defense walking stick or the Japanese hondo. I wanted to give you something that's a little bit more advanced, not the same old basic stuff all the time, although I'm a firm believer in the basics. Now I'm going to square up on this guy again. I've stepped back a little bit, made myself a smaller target. My hand is up to always protect my head. From this position, my hand is always here because you will never be able to defend yourself fast enough. In other words, if you have your hand here, your hand's here, the punch comes flying at your head, you might be able to move back and your hand comes up and it catches at the last second instinctively. That can happen, but most likely you're going to get hit as your hand's lifting. If your hand is already up in a defensive position because you sense this guy was a threat, you have situational awareness, you're practicing the principle of self-defense, number one is always pay attention. What's happening right now? Situational awareness. Number two, get in a better position. Good morning, Shannon. It's good to see you. We're talking about a little bit more advanced techniques with the Japanese Hanbo or protect and defend how to use the homemade self-defense walking stick. If you have your left foot forward, it's in the right hand, the back hand. The basic technique is just turn and strike. This is the threat. I bring it up very fast, turning my shoulders and hips as quickly as I can and turning my hand over as I do that. From here, it comes up. My goal is to knock him unconscious, take away his operating system, turn off the computer so that he can't think, he can't pull the knife out, he can't continue to press the attack. I'm going to hit him once, hopefully, and that's going to be it. If not, I'm going to then thrust in with this hand, strike here, strike here, blast him through the face, all from that basic technique. But to advance the basic technique, I want you to practice something that moves you off your center line. So if you're here in this protected position, your body's a smaller target, your hand is up, you're saying back up, stay away. I want you to step right foot, left foot, making yourself at a diagonal against the threat. His attack is coming this way. Your strike is going to hit him as he moves by. He loses vision of you. He doesn't see you clearly, but you're squared up. You see him clearly from this technique to this one, to this one. Striking here, blasting through the middle, you're able to knock him out for self-defense. Good morning, Matthew. Stance, a big factor in self-defense. I'm going to say it is not, except you have to have good footing. Instead of stance, think of footing. Stance will make you think more traditional martial arts, right? Horse riding stance, front stance, back stance, and then all the versions of those. In self-defense, think instead of footing. You have to have good footing, right? Good footing means keep your feet under you. The wider your stance is, the slower you'll be in response to the threat. You're going to react very slowly. You're going to get hit because anytime you take your feet out, you lower your center of gravity in order to move forward or backward or to one of the angles, which is where I prefer you move. If you've got to move, move forward first, right? Close with and destroy. That's my first choice. Good morning, Zero Gluten. It's good to see you. If you can, stick it right through his face for self-defense. Second is any angle, right? Either in and to the right, in and to the left, back into the right, back into the left. Third is you can replace your feet, stepping in, right, left, and then moving off the center line. That's a little slower. That's more advanced. That's a good chance to trip yourself up. But no matter how you move, side to side, front to back, or at a diagonal, the rule is never go wide. The wider you are, the slower you are. That means your center of gravity is slower. And in order to go forward, you've got to lift your center of gravity up, and then it comes back down. Now, there is a way to do that through training, but I don't want you to have to spend all that time training something that isn't as useful as what's called a walking stance or, or just a basic stance, good footing. So keep your body, think about how wide your shoulders are in the middle of your shoulder joint, that armpit straight down to the outsides of your feet. That's about as wide as you should be. A little bit wider is okay. A lot wider is slow. Your uh, legs lock straight usually. Your heels drive into the floor. Your heels go back. Your body goes onto your heels. Anytime you go on your heels, the next place that you go is on your bum, right? You go on your heels, and that's, same, that's true in boxing. 
any kind of fighting. You go on your heels, you're going on your bum. We say it differently in the ring or during training, right? But if you go on your back and they're ground and pound and stomping your head in the ground, that's not a good place for you to be. So if you can keep your body weight forward over the balls of your feet and the balls of your feet just under your big toe, under the toes, those are the, think of that as the balls of the feet. Not, you don't have to be up on your toes, but you want your weight shifted forward. For self-defense, if I'm here, I can move very quickly in that position. I can move back very, or very quickly. But I wanted to show you a drill, and we're gonna to get to that in about two minutes. I wanna show you what to do when you go to the other side. If your self-defense, homemade self-defense walking stick, your Japanese Hanbo, is in the front hand and not the back. In the back, smack him in the head, in the back, you're going to sidestep right, left, right in the head. Get off the angle from here. Boom. I'm off the angle. He goes by. I'm in better position. I'm not going to get hit. Now, to go to the left, I'm going to move left foot first. Always left, right. When I go to the left, I'm going to step left. And when I go to the right, I'm going to pull my right foot back at an angle a little bit. I can't do that until I step, though, because look what happens. I break my own rule. If I just turn here and the threat's coming straight, my feet can cross. I can do that if I pivot to the side. So I'm going to push myself with this foot, I push off, and that pulls me back. Now that takes me well out of the way of the threat. So this to the left, instead of stepping and turning, I'm going to pivot, coming to the side. Gotta get the bag out of the way. Here, let's move to the other side of the bag because we're gonna do it on this side. Got another fan on back there. These uh, boom mics are great, but they pick up all the sound. So from here, if this is the threat, the simple attack is point your thumb, or in the case of the, um, the Japanese Hanbo, I'm gonna slide my hand down the front and then lift it up and point it, right? So from here, I'm just gonna pick it up like this almost like a sword. So I'm gonna use it in this way. It's short enough you can do that. You're gonna have enough strength and control over it. So instead of sliding your hand down the back, I want you to now slide your hand down the front. So from here, I slide my hand down the front and I'm gonna point. As the threat comes by, I wanna get closer so you can see this. He's here, I'm gonna pull my right foot back to the right. Now I have to adjust because the bag doesn't move, right? And I want to say something about that too. A lot of techniques work great on the bag, work great on a partner who comes in and punches like this and holds. But then you do it in real life and it doesn't work. So many techniques like that. I was reviewing a martial art for someone who had a specific question about it, some newfangled thing that I have seen before. And, um, and I thought that works great as long as your partner attacks you exactly the way you want them to. It always works. It's almost like stunt fighting. In real life, probably not at all. From here, I turn and pull that foot back. Turn and pull the foot back. Now, the idea is he's going to go flying by me. And as he goes flying by me to the side, I'm just going to smash right over the top of his head and ideally knock him out. If you can turn off his operating system, turn off that computer, you don't have to worry about how else he's gonna hit you. If you wanna look at the basic technique from here, thrust right into his face. Let's say you thrust, he comes in, he's stronger than you, so you're gonna allow him to come in, and as, you, as he does, you simply just turn to the side. There was that movie, Mr. Miyagi, at the end of the movie, the first one, and they're out in the parking lot and the guy's losing his temper and he's trying to punch Mr. Miyagi and he just turns his body to the side. He lets the guy throw a punch. He breaks his hand through the window and the other window and he's got the bloody hand. You know, it's a movie, right? But the, every, a lot of those techniques in movies are based on moves that actually work. A good boxer knows how to turn. A good boxer also will usually duck and turn. And as the guy comes by, boom, boom, knock him out because he can't see him. Just try it with a friend. Try it with somebody that you train with. Have them come forward. You pull your body. But here, I gotta show you this again. This is extremely important. If you don't do this, it doesn't work. Your foot, this front foot here, has to pivot to the side. So you have to turn 
and you push off with this foot. You're pushing. So you push, pivot. When you turn here, you'll have to pull your toes up a little bit. You hit just a tiny bit. But you'll get this if you practice it. You'll get it. It'll become more natural. You'll do it without thinking about it. But this, if it doesn't turn, my center line stays just about there, and I'm going to get hit. The only way this works is that I turn, and look how far back that pulls my body off the center line. So you're going to get way off the center line when you do this technique correctly. Sorry, I should give you a fair warning when I'm going to turn the camera. But from here, I pull my body back, knock the guy out. If I'm doing self-defense with my homemade self-defense tool, the walking cane or the Japanese hanbo, I slide my hand down the front. I put it between us. You're getting too close. I thrust. Maybe he comes so fast. I don't hit the target. It's hitting his body. It's collapsing. I allow it to come in. I use that momentum of it pushing me back to push my right foot back, turn, pull myself off the line, and using this hard piece of oak, straight down right in the middle, knock him out. Awkward the cat, it's good to see it. Now, I wanted to give you the drills to practice, and then later, I'll give you more things to do when you go to the side. There are a lot of blocking moves, or, or um, call them a parry, right? Like a boxer doesn't, doesn't block, think martial arts blocking, but a boxer parries, moving it out of the way. So there are a lot of parrying moves that you're gonna do, going one way, going the other way, and we'll practice that, but those aren't as important as simply getting off the line and thrust, or get off the line and strike. I don't want you to spend too much time trying to block. I'd rather, like to, I'd rather see you spend a lot of time moving your body and hitting first for self-defense. Strike first when you can. So from here, I'm gonna drop the camera. We're gonna talk about footwork and, and footwork drills. Here's your first drill. And this is, this, is, this is a great bonus tip. If your mobility is not where it used to be or not where it should be, for whatever reason, doesn't matter, stop asking why, right? <laughs> why this, why that? It is, so then respond to it, right? Why is this guy gonna punch me? Boom. Stop asking why. Why is this guy trying to attack? Boom. Just hit him. Boom. Right? Stop asking why, but respond to the threat and move on. We just spend too much time, I think, trying to understand why instead of, well, that's, I can't control it. You know, that's what it is. Let's just, let's get it done. Let's take some action. You can use your stick, your hanbo, your self-defense walking stick, the stick that you're using to protect and defend for balance when you do this drill. So from here, once you see my feet, I'm going to go to the right, or you can hold it like this. This is also good. If you, if you can, do this. This is it. Step in, go to the left. Step in, go to the right. Now, this seems like an oversimplification, but it really isn't. In my experience, working with a lot of students of all age levels, it is not common, unless you've played soccer or you've danced or you've done martial arts or you've boxed, if you haven't done certain things, your body, especially as you get older and you haven't done anything for a while, going laterally, a lateral move, is not natural for you. It's good for you, it's healthy, it's the best thing you can possibly do for brain elasticity and to keep from rolling your ankles and your hips and not shuffling when you're, when you're really old and shuffling around the mall and the mall walkers and thinking you're gonna fall and break your hip all the time. And you know, you've seen, I'm not saying you, but you've seen people do that. And you think, man, I hope I don't shuffle like that. Get away from the shuffling. You're gonna strengthen everything. You're gonna make yourself injury proof. But more importantly, when it comes to self-defense, you're going to make yourself hard to hit. I want you to be hard to hit because you're not there when he throws the punch or he tries to stab. So from this position, going to the right, one, two, step in, and to the left. Step in, to the right, step in, to the left. And if this is your speed, it's your speed. Don't speed up until you're ready to speed up. If you can go faster, you're going to go a little quicker. One, in. A little quicker and if that speed is too easy you can start to pop down and then push yourself explode pushing yourself to the side this drill is going to make it natural for you to do it without thinking you're going to naturally start to move sideways and then later diagonally in and diagonally out that's going to be the optimal way for you to move so you don't get hit 
Now, back to where this all comes from. If you've just joined us, I said in the back hand, turning your shoulder, turn your hip, turn your wrist over, smack them upside the head for self-defense, knockout. That's a basic self-defense move with your Japanese hanbo. A progressive a progression to make it a little bit more advanced is you're going to step right, left, and as you do, you're going to put, pull yourself off the center line so you're not there, and by stepping and turning, you're gonna hit so much harder and faster. But to get there, you need this footwork drill. One, two. And I said, if that's hard, use this for balance. One, in, two. You look like Charlie Chaplin, but who cares? You're starting to get healthier. You're getting stronger. You're getting younger. You're aging in reverse because you're moving side to side when everybody else around you is moving front and back. In the whole world, Unless, like I said, unless you're an athlete, you do certain martial arts, or you do boxing, or you do dance, or soccer, or basketball, nobody's moving, or football, nobody's moving side to side, right? Yeah, they do that in football practice, they do that in uh, wrestling, you do that in jitsu, you do that in certain things, but how many people do that? And when was the last, if you did that, when was the last time? For some people, it's 30, 40, 50 years ago. So if you haven't been agile in a while, and I learned this, I was at a high level course where there were a lot of um, high level, high, highly trained, uh, current and former special operator, operators in certain kind of military training and doing that kind of work still, either you know, SWAT team, Sheriff's Department, personal security, that kind of stuff. And I was shocked, <laughs> and some young people, almost none of them could move to the side without tripping over their feet. And this isn't a criticism, but it was a wake-up call, and it, and it reminded me, oh, a lot of these martial arts where they're doing all these complex moves going side to side, they're not practical for so many people because they're not strong in their ankles and their feet and their hips anymore. But, I'm, but you're going to be, right? You're going to do these drills, and you're going to get really strong. So that's the first drill is just, and as fast as you can, and if that's slow at first, go slow. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Even if it's a tiny baby step, I promise you, keep moving in the direction that you want to go and you'll get somewhere. You'll get far down the road. If, it, if, it, if you're like this now, I promise you in a year, you're going to be like this. I've seen it. I've done it over and over again. And, and, uh, gentlemen, men and women, 50s, 60s, 70s, I haven't practiced with an 80-year-old moving side to side in person, but I know there are some who move better than I do and it doesn't, so age has nothing to do with it. It's lifestyle, it's how you're using your body still or not using it. So if you're not using it that way, start using it, you'll get there quickly. Senior self-defense is simple. Senior self-defense is junior self-defense, same self-defense as everybody else, but start where you are, use the simple techniques that work, and then later, if you wanna do more advanced techniques, practice the footwork first. That's senior self-defense. All right, so that's the first drill. The second drill, is going to be stepping in into the right and then back into your uh, starting position. So my feet, again, it's not, a, it's not a stance, it's just footing. My feet are under my body, step in into the right, step back into the beginning, and into the left and back. I'm going at this angle and then I'm going at this angle. Think of a V, making a V pattern. If you need to, and some people need to, Draw, a, get some sidewalk chalk, draw a V on the ground if you're doing it outside or in the garage. Or if you have carpet, put some tape down, some painter's tape. Get the blue stuff, it comes up easier. But you're simply going in, make yourself a V, back to the tip of the V, in to the left, and back. And then, after you do that for 30 seconds, back into the right, back into the left. But the most important thing, the most important part of this more advanced hanbo footwork training is that you have to lead right foot to the right and the left follows it. And don't do this. That doesn't get you out of the way enough. You're going to get hit. You have to pull your whole body out of the way so you, they can go by and you can hit them on the way by. So from here, right foot, left foot, left foot, right foot. Anytime I move to the right, my right leads. Anytime I move to the left, 
The most important rule is never cross your feet. Your feet get crossed while you're being attacked, especially somebody who's younger, bigger, stronger, coming with full force and power. You're going to collapse to the ground because you've tripped yourself, and they're just going to smash you. If you didn't already kill yourself when you fell and hit your head on the concrete, they're going to jump down and beat you in or kick you from the top. Don't let that happen, right? We're never going to cross the feet. Um, hello, everybody. The question was, have I ch uh, trained children 9 to 12? I have trained children... <laughs> Tens of thousands, and that's no exaggeration, over the last 30 years in my uh, schools and in uh, classrooms, I, I'm t currently teaching um, about 400 kids a week right now, week after week after week. And uh, so the answer is yes, I have, and especially that age group, 9 to 12, that's the easiest group. Three and four-year-olds, you're not really teaching a martial arts. Uh, five, six, seven, they're not really teaching them martial arts. Um, you're teaching them how to pay attention, listen to mommy and daddy, stop talking back, get the room clean. But yeah, exactly, David. David said that explains my gray hair. But I'm good at it, and I love it, and I have a system, and I work with uh, universities and professors, and we've tested it, and there are university studies on my teaching method. So it's not, it's not something that... Uh, and I didn't, I didn't develop it overnight. It took years and years. Really smart people working with a lot. Um, yeah, Matthew says he has military training. The footwork becomes uh, second nature the more you do it, and it rings true. Absolutely right. Those are the basic footwork drills. There are more advanced footwork drills, and I will teach you those, but I want you to get those down first. If you get those, you've covered just about everything you need. Then there are different things that are more complex, just like the, t the hand techniques. There are different ways to use the, the hanbo, turning in, turning out, striking straight, changing hand positions, uh, sliding here, sliding here, all kinds of cool things that you can do that are more advanced, but learn the basics first. Starting from here, this is your drill. After you, so you're going to do the footwork, here's how I, I would teach you in person if you were here. We would warm up doing this with staff in hand, hanbo in hand, or your self-defense walking stick. Or, like I said, if you needed a little bit more mobility help, uh, balance help, use your stick. That's what it's there for. So you're stepping in, stepping out. That's how we would warm up. That would be 30 seconds. And then I would have you put it in your back hand, practice, put your hand up, tell them back up, slide your hand down the back, just to here, and then turn your, ship, your hip, your hip and shoulders, your ships. Turn your hips and shoulders at the same time while you carve an upside down U with your thumb. What that does is stick that upside his head for self-defense, ideally knock him out, knock him out if you can. Uh, Doug said he hung a tennis ball from the ceiling like I suggested. Uh, he throws it when it comes back, wham, that's perfect. Yeah, that helps with timing and distance. Accuracy, if you have speed, power, um, but no, um, yeah, anti-tyranny stick. I like that, Sinjaman. Man. If you have no accuracy, if you can't hit your target, then you're useless to me. If we were in a unit or a platoon or a group or SWAT team or something like that, and we were all stacked up on the door getting ready to go in to save the hostage, and I've trained with you on the, the, the shooting range, and I've seen that you have impeccable speed and you can change mags, do all that kind of stuff, and you're strong and you're fast, but every time you pull the trigger while you're under, uh, you know, moving, you can't hit your target. And worse, you might hit me. Then I'm going to say, I, th I think you need to stay in the truck. But then this is this is why I want you to do this. If you can hit a moving target, which only comes from practice, slow is smooth, smooth is fast, crawl, walk, run. And so after you you went side to side, I would have you stand here, hand up, turn. And you would do this for 30 seconds, starting slower or slow at first, just to get the motion, make sure it doesn't hurt your wrist, and then faster and faster. If we had something to hit, we would hit it. If we don't have something to hit, you're going to go in the air. That's good, too, because now you know what it feels like if you don't hit your target, and you're going to work your accuracy then, or that way. Then I would have you switch hands. We always do both hands the same amount, and you might have one weak side, one strong side, so... You might have to slow it way down on your weak side 
and then gradually speed it up. Do that for 30 seconds, then we go back to a footwork drill. We would do every footwork drill at least two times. So we're doing this one again. Then we're gonna go into the front hand. And in the front hand, you're gonna slide your hand down the front and point it right at his face, and you're gonna thrust right in his face. From here, pick it up, thrust over and over again. Faster, oh, get this hand up, sorry. Just realized my breaking my own rules, which happens, right? But just thrusting, 30 seconds one hand, 30 seconds the other hand. I just wanna stick it in his face, that's a basic technique. Then we're gonna progress it after I do another footwork drill. The next one, I'm gonna step in right and back, left and back, one and back. And again, if you can go faster, go faster. If you need to go slower, go slower, but get it done. Then we go back to the first drill. The hand is here. Now I'm gonna step right, my left foot comes over, get your whole body out of the way. He's gonna flow through, but as he goes by, you're gonna whack him in the side of the head. Here's the threat, I'm stepping right, left. From here, right, left. From here, right, left. You can then, same thing, put in the other back hand, hand up, step over, and turn. Step over, and turn. Since you're going to the left, remember you must lead left, then pull the right. Then we go back to the footwork drill, second time, stepping in and back, 30 seconds, no less. You can go more. Two minutes is about the upper limit. More than two minutes, you start getting diminishing returns. So 30 seconds, two minutes, that's the basic rule. That's all exercise science. A lot of stuff that I do is based on what works. It's based on either best practices that have been tested, pressure tested, or based on exercise science. Then I go back to the first drill again, and I'm practicing and every time a little bit faster. This whole workout, I do both sides, 30 seconds, whole workout's less than 10 minutes. It's gonna get your heart rate up, you're gonna lean out faster, and you're gonna learn how to move your feet side to side. If you do it just 10 minutes a day over, I don't know, six weeks, six to 11 weeks, that's when we see the biggest change, you're gonna be like a uh, little flippy skippy, running, I don't know what his name is, running around <laughs> side to side, bouncing, you know what I mean? But the, what you're not gonna be doing is shuffling your feet with the mall walkers worried that you're gonna break your hip. You're not gonna be at the grandkids' house and worried that you're gonna step on a little kid and you trip and fall and break your hip. You're not gonna be walking your little fluffy dog that's this big and worried that you're gonna trip over your dog when he stops to sniff another dog because you can't move to the side anymore. You're gonna be spry and light on your feet. That's what I want. <laughs> I had a picture of all that in my head. I don't know where that just came, came from. All right, then we go back to another footwork drill. You've done two footwork drills twice, two each, 30 seconds each on each side. Now I'm gonna go back into the right and then step back up to the V. I'm just doing the opposite of the last footwork drill. And again, you can go fast, go fast, start to speed it up, get your heart rate up, but don't lose your line, don't lose your angles. You want these perfect, if you drew an, an X on the ground, you want these perfect things. Since man feel 20 years younger, see young people look older than me, amen. I don't know, I don't have a fluffy dog. I, I wouldn't know what to name it. Um, I don't know. But yeah, since man, that's right. I, I call it aging in reverse. My wife got a great compliment lately because she ages in reverse all the time. She's getting younger and younger. And it's all because of the way she moves her body. She's just exercising, she's working out, she watches what she eats. She takes care of herself in, a, in, a, in a, a way that she doesn't have to go to the doctor, that we don't have to worry about some pandemic going around because we have such strong immune system. And that's not to brag, that's to say, we all have the same choice, right? And we're all afflicted with different challenges in life, but at some point, wherever you want to start from, you can change and it's, it's a question. What if I can, what if I can't, right? So, uh, if, every, if you can imagine all the horrible things that can happen to you, you can also imagine all the great things that can happen to you. If you can find a million reasons why you can't do something, you can find at least one reason why you can, and then you only need one. And then you focus on that one reason, and then you just keep moving in that direction. Uh, I know, Shannon, not everybody has little fluffy dogs. But I'm, ta I'm talking about a certain kind of person 
who reaches a certain age of comfort and fear, because fear and comfort are, are married. They live in the same house. They, 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 they seek that comfort so much, you know, trying to make everything comfortable, more time off, early retirement, blah, blah, blah. And now they, they take 25 different pills for their heart and their uh, digestion and their blood and their diabetes and blah, blah. And then they get the little fluffy dog as a companion or, I don't know, because it's cute, I guess. And then they're out walking it. And I see them and they're not, and not all of them. Just to your point, not all old people have little dogs. Some of them have Rottweilers and pit bulls, but they're shuffling because they're afraid. Oh, if I pick up my foot too much, I might break my hip. And I'm not making fun of them. I'm just saying they don't have to live like that. You don't have to live like that. Move your body. Move your body, and you won't ever get there. All right. So we have going back. We have one more drill. That's the front hand drill where I'm in this position. Instead, I'm going to stick in his face still, but then I'm going to step off of the center line by simply moving my front foot back. And remember, you have to pivot. This foot has to pivot. If you go like this, you've crossed your feet. You're going to get hit, knocked down, because this foot's going that way and that back foot's going this way. Both of your feet have to go that way. The only way to get there is to turn. If I just move one foot, my body is still there. I'm getting hit. If I pivot and turn, Look how far that pulls me back. Pulls me back like two feet. Pulls me back two feet because I'm a big dude. But it'll pull you back enough that you don't have to get hit. From here, I'm in this position. Back up, you're too close. I thrust. He's coming in full force. I can't get out of the way fast enough by slide, or stepping right or left. So I'm going to pivot instead. When I do, now he's here. He's looking that way. He can't even see me out of the periphery. Bam! Right on top of his head. And if one doesn't do it, bam, bam, put the other hand on it, smash him five or six times. Fight's not over until you win. Close with him, destroy, fight like hell. It's all about self-defense, right? Simple self-defense using the walking stick, the self-defense walking stick, or Japanese hanbo. It's how you protect and defend. From here, I put it in the other hand. Step back. This hand is up. Here, I thrust. Can't get out of the way enough. Turn back. Pivot on the front foot. Smash. Just as they go by, it's quick, it's fast, it's very effective. Straight down on top, the other hand comes here. You can box, you can thrust. You know there are lots of things that you can do, but what's important in this training with us working today is footwork. This is a little bit more advanced footwork for the hanbo, for the Japanese hanbo or the self-defense walking stick. So last review, the footwork drills. Once you've practiced your basic thrusting technique and striking techniques, and slide the hand down the back. Oh, here's, here's a fun one that I was messing around with the other day that comes from the walking cane. You know how we like to snatch it up under his, his groin? You can have it in this position where you slide your hand down the front of or the back of it, and then simply by pointing your elbow to the sky, drive it up, boom. If you got really close, maybe you hit him with that elbow in his face. That's okay, too, for self-defense. Anything I can do to remove or destroy his targets. But if I stick that up in his face, thrust, smash, 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 blast, close with and destroy, fight like hell. From the backhand, turn it up and over, and then step off the center line at an angle. That's the progression. So this is basic, this is intermediate. Basic, and I'm just turning shoulders and hips. My thumb is making that upside down U. Bam, and I'm putting it upside the side of his head, knock him out if I can for self-defense. The progression is the right foot steps over, the left foot comes out of the way, I hit him. He's here, I'm way over here. From here to here. And then the second one is it's in the front hand. I have to turn my back foot. It's a different version. And pivot on the front foot. Front foot has to pivot. If it doesn't pivot, your body's still in the way. You're going to trip yourself and fall. Turn. Point all your toes that way. Your toes are pointing this way. Finish that way. And the question earlier about uh, what kind of stances. Don't worry about stance, worry about footing. Get your feet under your body. 
It, it make it just like you would be walking down the street. Because you don't want to be walking down the street and then, who's who? You can. If you want to, you can. I, I wouldn't just because it's not as fast. And I don't care what anybody says. It's not as fast for me. And maybe it's fast for you. But, and it's probably, you know who it's fast? Just, it's, it's fast enough for those actors. Toshiro Mufune, right? I'm not saying that right, but the um, Yojimbo movies. Yojimbo, meaning bodyguard. And he did, you know, Seven Samurai and um, Ron and The Fortress, The Hidden Fortress. The Fortress, The Hidden Fortress. Anyway, all those old Japanese movies. Just like a lot of martial arts. A lot of the martial arts strikes and techniques are perfect because it's done by stuntmen and actors in a movie with uh, action and cut and lighting and camera angles and computer aided and sometimes a string attached and um, it's perfect it works well like so exceptionally well that's like you know you want to fight like Jason Bourne I'll teach you how to fight like Jason Bourne uh, it's one of my favorite styles of martial arts however it's been proven, not definitively, but for a lot of people, it's very hard for them to make those techniques. What really works, um, oh, hello, Richard, it's good to see you. What really works is for self-defense, like Western boxing, or either wrestling or grappling, you know, simple grappling, basic moves, kickboxing, Muay Thai, that kind of stuff. It's learning how to take a hit, learning how to move out of the way, how to move your feet, move your body. And that's the best self-defense, but that's not as cool in the movies unless you're making a movie about boxing. But if you're making a movie where one guy has to be James Bond or uh, the Bourne identity, the Bourne guy, Jason Bourne, or Liam Neeson's character in Taken, then you need some super cool, esoteric Batman Begins. This is where the conversation started this morning. What about the, the martial arts Casey method um, that's in Batman Begins and can't think of the other one right off the top of my head. Oh, Jack, Jake Reacher. Is it Jack Reacher or Jake Reacher? I'm not a big movie guy, so one of those. I remember when it came out, though, how cool it looked in all the fighting signs, st styles, right? And they're doing all these things that work exceptionally well when you have somebody feeding you. Same thing with the old-style ninjutsu techniques using the hanbo. Um, when... When the guy comes in like this, or in uh, the Aikido movies with, uh, what's his face, the, the, the most ridiculous martial artist in the history of the universe, Steven Seagal. When Steven Seagal, especially when he's older and his belly's out to here, and I mean, he just, he just looks so ridiculous to me, and the guy's, you know, punching him, as long as you're feeding somebody the right way, then it makes a great movie. They're great techniques. They're extremely effective. What's the most effective martial arts in the world? It's the one that they're filming for the movie right now because, you know, it, you know the outcome. It's written into the script. You know, the stunt director, the stunt fighter, fight choreographer has already written out everything. That's the most effective one in the world. What's the most effective for real? It's not techniques. It has to be, um, yeah, David says John Wick fights are cool but difficult to do. They are, but, they're, but that's because if you watched him just get in there and do basic stuff, you'd be like, ah, eh, you know, just a lot of shooting. What makes a lot, all that extreme violence more fun to watch for some people like us is that he's doing really cool stuff that you're like, oh, that's sweet. I wish I could learn that kung fu or that kind of style, you know, or Steven Seagal, you know, back in the day, you know, on the submarine and he's try chopping people with the big stuff and then, you know, because he's the chef and stuff. Anyway, hello uh, to Andre in France. Anyway. My point was this, you can le learn all of the esoteric styles that go with the Japanese hanbo. Learn the moves and, and the old style stances, right? And how to move and how to do, you know, the takedowns. And but then learn what works on the street, what's going to work for you for self-defense. If that's your goal, if your goal is more in the Japanese hanbo, you know, or study both. I like to do both. Every time I see a cool move, I want to learn that move. I want to know how it works, and especially the leverage stuff where you're, you know, you're going in and you're twisting somebody, or you're twisting them out. That stuff is so cool. I've been doing that since I was a little kid. I love that, but I know for a fact that in most self-defense scenarios, the stuff that works is the, are, are just basic strikes. Basic strikes and learn how to move your body so you don't get hit. Become hard to hit. 
If you could practice anything, practice that footwork. Get nimble on your feet again. Get hard to hit because so you're, you're not there. And if you do get hit, you learn how to move with it and take a hit. And it doesn't knock you out so that you can live the fight to defend yourself and knock him out for self-defense. You guys have been awesome. We have another one of these today. Um, I think I've got the bow today. I'm going to do the bow staff a little bit later. I want to get back to like kind of an update on 100,000 spins for bow staff mastery. We'll do that a little bit later. Um, and I've been working on spinning in reverse. I don't know if we're ready to start training that together yet. Maybe you guys have been doing that. Anyway, I appreciate you guys too. Thanks, Zero Gluten. Thanks, David, Andre. Since Amit, it's good to see you. Matthew, Richard, I'll see you guys in a little bit. Oh, Shannon, 